Hello, good afternoon. This is Oscar from Magnesian. In today's session, we're going to dive in into the uh, heavy equipment um, license. We're going to be looking off highway applications, especially for John Deere brand. As you can see, we've got heavy equipment division, we've got compact equipment division, we have stationary engines, uh, built in power plants, generators, turbines. We've got also multi-purpose vehicles. For the sake of this video, we're going to take a look into the heavy equipment side of things. As you can see on the left far menu, we have about 78 brands. Uh, we have our favorite screen in which we're going to have the more common brands we'd like to diagnose and connect based on our fleet. Um, I'm going to pick John Deere. We have in this uh, left menu some of the series um, in terms of coverage we've got uh, we can also filter out as you can see clicking by category we can filter and I would I'd like to choose a crawl excavator for mining in this case I'm gonna pick the 160 G LC and we're gonna be able to see all of the electronic models or body computers we will have access to uh, digging into the central computer, the electronic model, we've got engine and the instrument cluster, right? We can search advanced functions such as compression tests, cylinder codeouts, inje injector coatings. Um, we can force regions on the particulate uh, filter. Uh, we've got differential pressure test res resets and restarts. We can also um, choose a specific model in which we'd like to connect to. For the sake of the video, I'm going to be choosing an engine, ECM, with the tier 4 final uh, configuration on emission standards. We're going to connect to the ECM and we can see the main diagnostics menu, right? Starting with the full code readings. As you can see, we've got full codes as well, we've got a description about the specific fault on this machinery and equipment uh, coming from the manufacturer's side. Um, we are not going to need to consult any external source or uh, service repair manual to be able to identify with what sort of uh, fault are we having the readings, right? Uh, let's say the fuel regulation solenoid valve resistance supply were too high. If we click on additional information, we are able to see freeze frame data uh, date and hour of last occurrence, warning lab and system state. We've got help and components of the fault. I uh, can see the C5002. It's a fuel regulation solenoid valve identified as the component related on the fault. And we can also see additional information about the component. I can see a diagram. I can see pinouts. We have some operational data such as supply voltage, tightening torques and other important information and configurations based on these um, full codes. We can uh, dive into the schematics. We're going to be in a minute looking at to the wiring diagrams. If we want to troubleshoot this full code, we can see a list so we can have a step-by-step -step guidance on how to troubleshoot these uh, full codes, right? As you can see, step number one, check the fuel regulation solenoid valve, check the wiring and connections, check the control unit, uh, perform the following actions. We've got submenus over here with some of in it, some of the series of in this initial conditions and some other special instructions. I'm not going to dive into much into the troubleshooting guides. I want to go back into the fold code readings. We've also got the fold code clearings. Uh, this is a uh, great function when we want to identify any active or inactive fault codes we might be getting on the readings. Uh, so we can identify which are the temporary and the permanent status ones, right? Um, going back to the diagnostics menu, we've got system data, ECU information, we've got engine load profile information, some parameters that we can take in consideration to see what has been uh, the data registrations on the load uh, profile of the engine. Okay, uh, we've also got live measurements and live monitoring, so we can do real-time tests 
um, based on our um, based on our uh, type of sensors of our interest uh, let's say a manual selection here and I want to filter out uh, let's say we have a total of 192 sensors into this engine I'd like to see and test some pressure and temperature sensors let's say the engine coolant the ECU temperature uh, let's say the fuel pump um, pressure and we've got the uh, fuel temperature if I click here in the little gauges I will be able to see real-time monitoring we're gonna be able to get system alerts if we get any wrong readings right um, we've got system displays as well for this configuration we're gonna be able to see the system display on a fuel also the after treatment system and also the DEF model Let's pick up the after treatment system for this configuration. And we've got DOC, DPF, we got also the SCR and AOC. We can see some measurements and instruments over here. So we can be um, aware of what are the real measurements under certain conditions. Okay. As well, we've got uh, special functions such as component actuations. We can uh, actuate the EGR valve. On this engine, we've got system checks. We can perform uh, compression tests, a cylinder cutout test, performance test. We can also do a engine wiring test, status of communications. We can also check um, abuse, uh, excessive engine speed rates. Uh, we also can check the exhaust gases temperature in the catalytic converter, verification of the selective catalytic reductive system. And also, we've got any registration on unsuccessful regeneration operations. Um, more on the DEFs part of uh, the system checks, we've got the AdBlue pump, the dosing system, the metering, and also the maximum flow on the AdBlue fuel pump. Okay. Uh, we can set some parameters injector exchange, injector coating, diesel. Uh, catalyst coating, uh, DPF coating as well, and coating on the SCR. We're able to manipulate those parameters as well as maintenance on the diesel particular filter. We can perform regions, we can perform a differential pressure reset, and also a particular filter cleaning. Uh, we've got uh, after treatment system code clearings and coolant purge from the AdBlue DEF system, and a reset on the inducement mode. Okay. We also uh, have a great calibrations on the EGR and also we can perform a throttle valve adjustment for the exhaust openings, right? Uh, this is more on the main diagnostics menu. I said a couple of minutes ago about the electrical wiring connections. We can have uh, the technical info license available so we can have additional information on technical data of the components. We can see diagrams, locations, spinouts, references. Going to the schematics, I'd like to show some of the great functions we have on the electrical wiring diagrams on these um, engines ECM. Uh, I can see the main control unit here. If I double click, I can see a little bit of operational data and pinouts like I showed you before. We can choose a specific uh, components such as the cylinder injector number six. Also, we get important information about repair times and some other uh, pinouts, power supply and voltages. So we can have the reference while performing any troubleshooting, right? We've got maintenance data, we've got intervals. Uh, let's say this is the final four tier configuration emission standards. We're going to see uh, periodic services, intervals within operation work hours on the machine. We've got vehicle, vessel data as well, uh, technical data, configurations on timing belts, uh, fuel system, oversupply, cooling system, lubrication. Uh, we've got troubleshooting by symptoms. These are specialty tests created by manufacturers. So we can follow some uh, repair guides once we have a symptom on the machine, right? And last but not least, releases and procedures for this particular specific John Deere uh, crawl excavators we're gonna be able to perform 
some of the maintenance and general indications about the DEF and AdBlue system. Okay. Once we have finished the maintenance and provide uh, any information on the diagnosis, we can go back here and we have the ability to save a diagnostic reports that will uh, basically save up automatically and do all the data registration of all the diagnostics in any perform or advanced uh, setting we have performed on the machine. We can just save it up into our uh, local files and or export it into a PDF or Excel so we can have it on our equipment, okay? If you wanna check another video on a John Deere, please let me know and I'll be happy to help. Take care, bye-bye.